it's Jessie V. Happy New Year. I cannot believe we are in 2024. As you guys probably noticed, or maybe not, maybe you did not notice, I took like a two week break, which I don't usually do, but we had Ty's family in for the holidays. And I feel like I just needed a second, you know, just a little moment. So thank you guys for being so patient. But we are back in 2024 with new videos and just back to our usual schedule. As you can see behind me, I do have a new backdrop. I thought it was the coolest thing ever. It's an owl with glowing eyes. It did look a little familiar and I was wondering if maybe it's from like a game or something. So let me know down below if it is. But I thought it was so cool. It's kind of like a wintry, snowy owl vibe that has powers. But before we continue talking about this, let's talk about our winner from last month's backdrop. That contest was over on Instagram and the winner is Strawberry Fairy 27 So congratulations. And if you would like to win this new backdrop, all you have to do is be subscribed to this channel, turn on your notification bell, and then head over to my Instagram account, give it a follow, and DM me the owl emoji. You can either DM it or just like comment it on a photo of mine on my profile. Okay, and just before we get started, in case you have not seen, we have a lot of cool new things on the website, but the thing I was most excited about is that we have real Leica products on our website. So Leica were the creators of Coraline, and so we did have our limited edition like real Coraline doll like this was what the doll looked like in the movie But this sold out so quickly So I think we're gonna try and get more so just be patient I think they're coming but we also have a cuter version of that which is the Coraline plushie She actually has button eyes. I think she's so cute So we still have some of these in stock so if you would like a Coraline plushie I will link it down below but without further ado Let's get right into today's video today. We're talking about a very bizarre crime from history. It's also very creepy, not just bizarre. And it's about a man who lived with spiders, an attic man, if you will. There was a man named Philip Peters that had been living in his home in Denver, Colorado for over three decades. And here is an actual photograph of his house. He was married to a woman named Helen who had just recently broken her hip in a fall. For five weeks, she was in the hospital recovering. So Philip was just at home alone. And his neighbors would open their homes to him in the evenings so he wouldn't have to be by himself at dinner time, which I honestly think is like the sweetest thing for them to do. I love when you have like a true community in your neighborhood. Well, on the night of October 17th of 1941, Philip walked into his house to see a tall, gaunt, and disheveled man raiding his fridge. So this fight broke out between them and the strange man grabbed Philip's cast iron stove shaker and beat him to death with it before fleeing. So Philip was discovered hours later by his very worried neighbors. Maybe he hadn't come to dinner on time. And the Denver police were obviously called once they saw the state that he was in. And the police searched all around the house but couldn't find any evidence of the murderer. It was like he just vanished into thin air. And then Philip's wife came home from the hospital healed but she was now a widow. So a good friend of hers moved in with her to just help around the house And this is where some very strange occurrences start happening in the months following Helen's return She and her friend reported weird things happening around the house food was going missing Strange sounds were heard throughout the day and night things were just out of place Like she would put something down maybe a book on a table She would walk out of the room come back and the book would be placed somewhere else in the room or in the house so Helen's friend was convinced that this house was haunted, maybe even by Philip himself, but she was just so sure there was a ghost messing with them. But obviously that would be kind of a ridiculous thing to just assume. So Helen decided to relocate to live with her son. She just wanted to be away from all the madness that was happening. So the house just stood vacant and the strange sounds and disgusting smells continued to be reported to the police by the neighbors. But whenever they went there, they couldn't find anyone in the house. Everything changed in 1942 when two police officers decided to stay outside the house watching it for any strange activity. They waited for hours and hours and didn't see anything until one of them noticed this figure of a man walking back and forth inside the house through the windows. Can you imagine just how creepy this would be? Like people are reporting that maybe there's a ghost in the house and finally they see something, a silhouette. 
moving around. So they ran inside, but they couldn't find the figure anywhere. So they waited and waited some more until they heard a sound coming from upstairs. It kind of sounded like someone was walking around. So they ran up there following those sounds to a closet and they sprung open the door just in time to spot a pair of legs disappearing through a tiny hole in the ceiling. It looked to be probably the entrance to the house's attic. So they grabbed the legs at the last second and they pulled the man down to the ground. They had finally caught the murderer. The man's name was Theodore Conies, and as a child he had poor health, which continued to plague him in adulthood, and because of that he wasn't able to work, and he ended up breaking into Philip and Helen's house to steal some food, but on his second attempt at doing this, this is when Philip just walked into his house and saw him raiding the fridge, and that's when he decided to attack Philip ending his life. So it was kind of like a spur of the moment thing. He then went to hide in the attic where he stayed for months and months, creeping into the main part of the house whenever he was hungry, and the police sent their smallest officer to crawl up into that small hole into the attic, where they found that the man had made himself a nest of some sort. It smelled so bad that the officer actually vomited, and the attic was covered in giant spider webs with massive spiders crawling all over the place, and he was just living amongst those spiders. This is literally a quote from one of the officers. He said, a man would have had to be a spider to stand it up there, because he was literally amongst thousands of spiders and he didn't even really care. So the newspaper heard about this and ran with it. And so he was literally dubbed the Denver Spider-Man. And no, not the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man in the red and blue suit. <laughs> this guy was obviously a murderer and was just living in the attic. And it's crazy how many like true crime stories I've heard about people living in the attic. And I know I've done a couple videos in my real life from my sister and I hearing things in the attic and going up to explore to make sure no one's there. No one ever was, but we definitely have heard some strange noises up there. So stories like this really, really creep me out. And if you guys are interested in hearing like more like really bizarre true crime stories, give this video a thumbs up and let me know. I do like doing them, you know, from the early 1900s and stuff like that because they're so far behind us that people forget and don't really hear about those stories that often. So I'm just really intrigued by them. Anyways though guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Don't forget if you would like a Coraline plushie, I have linked it down below. And don't forget if you would like to enter to win the backdrop, just head over to my Instagram and DM me the owl emoji and make sure you're following me. And yeah, I hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day and I will see you in my next video. Bye!